And another thing he said that stuck to me to this day, he said this specifically, it's not illegal to be crazy. If y'all been following this whole series, y'all know we've tried to help my mom in so many ways. And at this point, this right here, this moment, I like after this, I just say, you know what, I give up. for watching Miss Angelique TV where we talk about everything and when I mean everything I mean like obviously you see some new things here of in the month of July um, I decided to rebrand my channel mainly because I turned 25 um, and I just wanted something different as you can see by the title this is gonna be a continuation to my infamous mama drama series we left off i believe i was talking about how my mom was pretending to date a rockets player so if you're not already subscribed go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below because you don't want to miss the series and by the way if you are new to my channel um or if you're new to this series i'm gonna need for you to just go ahead and pause the video right now that way you can go to the very first video because you don't want to miss this like literally every single story connects like that literally so you would need to watch the very first second third and so forth so um go ahead and do that and then come back to this video but if you are already caught up and you ready to figure out what the fuck happened next go ahead sit back relax and let's get into the video so after the whole ordeal with um myself and my aunt's boyfriend which i named white boy in the story time series um we were searching for her and everything we couldn't get her basically <laughs> and so um a couple of days went by without any threats because normally we would hear from her like every day i thought like oh shit like did she get arrested like what's going on but no that wasn't the case um a couple days later she ends up sending more threats i don't remember what the text messages or the threats were because it's been a while since i've looked at the messages uh, so i'm just gonna post the message now that way y'all can see it so i'm not gonna be able to read it word for word but here are the messages And so once white boy got those messages, he was like, you know what? I gotta like try to do something. I don't know what I'm gonna try to do, but let me just call her and just try to see if I can find out where she is. So he calls her from his phone and she answers now. And I'm gonna be telling you guys how he explained it to me because I wasn't actually there um, at this time of the phone call and what I'm gonna tell you guys now. She answered the phone and asked who it was. Well, he made up some name, like I guess he was a quick thinker cause I wouldn't have been able to think that damn quick to think, okay, let me pretend to be somebody else if she don't think um, who I am, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, okay, let me just pretend. So he gave her a name, I don't know what the name was, but um, he was just basically saying, yeah, my name is so-and-so and she was like, oh, okay, yeah, what's up? And so basically he was just like, yeah, I wanna meet up um, for a good time and so many words. I don't know exactly what he said, but basically he was kind of setting it up as if like he wanted to chill with her, hang out, you know, um, give her some money because that was the type of thing she was into at that point. Like if you didn't have any money, like she really wasn't fucking with you. And it, it's kind of like hurtful to say that about my mom, but that's how the level that she was on at that time. So that's the reason why this whole thing occurred, which I am about to explain. Um, they ended up setting up a place to meet up and they met up at Walgreens. Now they met up at this Walgreens, which was right in front of Walmart. White boy arrived there before my mom did. Um, I don't know who saw who first. I can't remember. Um, it's been a while. I don't know who saw who first. But um, my mom realized who it was. And so once she realized who it was, she immediately started walking away. Um, now, white boy, he decided to approach her like in his car, which he probably shouldn't have done. Um, but I guess at this point, he was like desperate in a way to like get her help, try to get her off the streets you know what i'm saying because at this point we knew she was mentally ill but no one else really knew besides us since we were the only people that knew her for ever and so we can only we all we know the difference 
outsiders aren't gonna know the difference you know but we know something is wrong obviously but once she realized who he was he was following her with his car like behind her trying to get her to like stop and talk to her but she was being really really belligerent and then at some point he ends up getting out of the vehicle um and allowing my aunt to drive and he got on foot to follow her because she began to walk into these apartment complex which is also a senior citizen apartment complex as well she makes it into the apartment she begins to scream read and so once that occurred that's when he picked up the phone and i was at that point able to hear the background noise because he he wanted to have someone else on the phone that way he can like make sure that i hear the commotion you know what i'm saying so i was on the phone and i was listening to it and i was just like you know what just see where she's gonna go um and i wanted to know where she was gonna go maybe she was living with somebody or staying with someone in those apartments i didn't know at that time but she ended up um walking into this elderly couple's home the woman heard the commotion outside and probably open her door or look up people i don't know how how it came about but whatever it was she figured out what was going on and took her into her home to protect her i guess um and so white boy he saw that you know and he saw the door and he was knocking on it but they didn't answer the door so at this point i'm like you know what let's just call the police i don't know what else to do let's just call the police see if they are able to pick her up get her some help I don't know what the fuck, but we just need to do something. So, white boy ends up calling the police. And then at this time, I was still at the house. But once he said that he called the police and they were going to be on their way, I was like, okay, babe, you know, take me out there. Because, again, mind y'all, I'm, I'm nine months pregnant at this time. Remember, I'm still pregnant. We're still in 2018. Um, this is May of 2018, to be exact, that we're in right now. No, June of, May, June of 2018, I'm sorry, that we're in right now. So um, just a couple of days from a giving birth, don't even know, but I know I'm going to be having a baby real, real soon. I'm just going through all of these different emotions and all this shit is going on and I'm pregnant, okay? Anyways, Gabriel ended up bringing me to the complex that white boy was at. And so whenever we pulled up, he was talking to this other couple um, who were a witness of what was going on. They're trying to hang out with them. Um, until the cops came that way they can give a statement and stuff like that but they took so long and so they ended up leaving but they did exchange numbers um in case white boy wanted to call them whenever the cops made it back if they needed a statement probably a good hour or so passed that we we're standing out there waiting for the cops to arrive mind y'all i didn't get up and leave the house right away i probably waited a good 30 45 minutes and then i was like you know what let me just get up and let's just go there i'm pretty sure they're gonna be pulling up at the same time as us boy was i wrong they took their sweet ass time um y'all know how they do whenever it's not really an emergency no one's life is in danger they're not gonna really be in a rush the cops made it um it was an off it was two officers it was a black officer and then it was a white officer as well now we explained the situation to the officers and um just ran down the whole situation as far as how this situation came about you know how she used to be totally different before and just kind of give, giving them a backstory before they approach a situation that way they can kind of know what the fuck they're about to get themselves into right so um, we explained to them everything and um the police was like okay hey I, i'll i don't mind going up to the wherever apartment or um building she's in to see if she's okay see if she wants to take her in for some mental evaluation or help but i cannot make her um, if she doesn't appear to be um, harming herself or harming others, it's, I mean, it's nothing that we can do. Uh, and another thing he said that stuck to me to this day, he said this specifically, it's not illegal to be crazy. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. He said, it's not illegal to be crazy. So, you know, and I don't, I, I don't want to say crazy because I don't think my mom is crazy. You know, she has a mental illness, but that's exactly what he, the, the cop is saying told me i'm just telling y'all the exact words he used i wouldn't go far saying she was cr she's crazy but that's what he said it's not illegal to be crazy so in other words it's not illegal to lash out have mental breakdowns be out in the streets doing things that you never done before like it's not illegal to be that way as long as you're not putting yourself at risk or anyone else at risk so I'm like, okay, okay, whatever, let's just try. So, um, and then we also explained to him that she was on probation and stuff and we didn't know she had any warrants out for her arrest because she hadn't been checking in with her probation officer since she had been back in Houston. 
um he checked she was clear she didn't have any warrants so we go and lead the officer up to the um building white boy he did not go because you know my, my mom had this thing she just have it out for white boy so much and so we didn't want that to like trigger any anything more or anything um you know uh fuck any any unnecessary drama basically we just was trying to keep it as simple as possible because you know we're already in a senior home i keep saying senior home we're already in a senior living apartment complex we don't you know she already then had all this type of commotion earlier we don't need no extra shit, you know so we were trying to be nice and cool about it so um he stayed out we went inside and the um the lady i don't know I don't, I don't know her name her name isn't really relevant but the elderly lady that was living there um opened the door and she was a little hesitant to let us in but once the officer explained that you know we're not there to hurt her she's she's perfectly fine no one is harming her she was like okay cool so me my aunt and the officer we both all three of us we went into the house and um my mom was sitting on their uh, sitting at the kitchen table that they had and she looked like she was cleaning out her wallet or her purse, something like that. Um, but the officer was asking what was going on if she was okay. And basically she just went on a rant about how we think she's crazy and how she's not crazy and that she's just finally standing up for herself. Um, and we're not used to seeing her like that. So we just think she's crazy and she ain't crazy. So, <laughs> I mean, she said more than that, but that's basically what she said in, in a nutshell. Um, she's not crazy and we think she's crazy which we never told her she was crazy but because at that time she was not able to acknowledge the fact that she actually had a problem actually had a mental condition of some sort the mental condition of her was a problem and she couldn't help that um unfortunately but as she explained in this to the officer the officer basically was like well you know if you will i can't make you go anywhere or get no help but i will at least offer to you um your family has recommended it but i explained to them i can't make you do anything but i'm still gonna offer do you need help whatever and mom's like no but my legs has been swelling and so i do feel like i need to go to the um, hospital because i feel like my blood pressure is a little bit too high now backstory my mom suffers with high blood pressure she has suffered with high blood pressure since i was born if not before but definitely since i was born and um during this time, it was hot. It was summer, hot summer Texas, right? And she was all, always on foot because she didn't have anywhere to go. She was always walking walking the highway, you know, and Houston is big. Houston ain't you no know, little ass city. So you gotta walk ways to get to certain places. Everything is not in one spot. So um, by her doing so much walking in the heat, she, my mom literally got dark in the, in the face, you know, obviously because of the sun. And then she would be really like, she was sweating. She wasn't on her medication for her blood pressure either at that time so that made it even worse um and so whenever she gets like that she would like just be walking and walking and then she her feet would swell really really bad and to where it hurts for her to walk um and so that's the reason why she wanted to go to the hospital so they were like okay cool we'll call the ambulance so they called the ambulance the ambulance finally come everyone walks down because the um building or the, the their apartment was like on the third floor or something like that so we walked down meet the ambulance briefly explain to the paramedics um what was going on and why we were even in this predicament in the first place um they told us the exact same thing it's not illegal to have issues it's not illegal to be crazy and so we're like okay you know we, we've tried so many things if y'all been following this whole series y'all know we've tried to help my mom in so many ways and at this point this right here this moment i like after this i just say you know what i give up like i'm not gonna do this anymore i'm pregnant i'm not gonna put myself through distress anymore like i'm not trying anymore it's obviously nothing that we can do um besides pray for her and hope that nothing bad happens to her out here in these streets um so yeah so the next morning white boy called the complex that my mom was at the previous night um, just to let them know what was going on put, put them on the lookout for her um, because we know we knew the type of person she could, can be whenever she's like this you know um, and so they ended up banning her from the property they explained to white boy that um, since they were since aware of the situation that they weren't going to allow her back on the property she wasn't even supposed to be there anyway because you're only supposed to as a guest 
you know, until to stay there for like no more than three to seven days at a time or something like that. Um, unless you're a resident, which she's not a resident. She's not a senior citizen at all. So, you know, she ended up going back. Um, I don't know how soon she ended up going back, but um, they did have to physically knock on um, the door of a man that she was staying with. She was staying with the older man in these apartments. Um, no, this, my, this is the second apartment from the first apartment that she was in whenever the police came and all of that. So she found a, a man who was staying in the apartment who offered um, a place for her to stay. And the way that we found that out is because on my mom's Facebook or Instagram, I can't remember how we saw this video, but I, I found a video of her speaking with this man, just talking. She was just recording a video of him talking and I couldn't really understand what that was about. Uh, she used to record a lot of weird random stuff um around this time by the way but um whenever we saw that we realized she was in the same apartment complex and so um i believe white boy contacted the apartment complex again just to alert them hey i think she's still in the apartment i'm not sure but um just if you want to check just go ahead and check we just we we, we don't want her to like hurt any elderly people or anything like that or take advantage of them or anything so like he was concerned he we didn't want her to be there even though we couldn't couldn't do anything but we could at least protect someone else you know if we were able to and so in that instance we were able to at least protect them because they didn't really know who my mom was and stuff like that um they don't really know who what she was capable of we don't really even know what my mom was capable of still to this day uh, mental illness surprised you like you you would think a person isn't capable of something that they are actually capable of and they were definitely surprised they ended up having to knock on the door um, and forcefully remove her now whenever i say forcefully i don't mean like you know have to drag her ass out there but basically they have to tell her like hey like we we're gonna charge you with or we're gonna file charges for trespassing if you come back like we you gotta go so she had to pack her stuff and they have to escort her out so after that um maybe a day or so went by um and i got a random facetime call from a random number and i don't usually answer unknown calls yet alone unknown facetime calls but for some reason i was feeling a little facetimey that day and, and i decided to answer and it was a random guy um he looked foreign he didn't look like he was from here but he was like hey my name is so-and-so i don't remember what his name was but but he introduced himself and told me that um, my mom was talking to him about me and we're just telling him how um basically how she messed up and she wants me in her life and i'm the only person that she has and she wants to make things better and so i kind of briefly explained to him i'm like look we've been through this with her so many times i don't really know and so he was like well can you just do me a favor like i, I can tell like she really really misses you she really really loves you and her grandkids um you're her only child and just do me a favor and talk to her so i'm like okay you know what cool Let, i'll talk I'll, I'll give her a chance so he gave her the phone mind y'all we still on facetime so he gave her the phone and I could tell that she had been crying or whatever, but um, the conversation was pretty short. It wasn't really long, but um, she was just like, I'll do whatever you need me to do in order for me to stay in your life. Like I just, you're the only person I have, you're my only child and I love you, you know, the whole shebang. And so I was like, look, the only thing I want for you to do is to get help. If you can promise me that you can get help, then I can promise you that I'll stay in your life and I'll, you know, be here for you every step of the way. And so she's like, okay, cool. And that was that. That was in the phone call. Um, and I thought everything was okay. Now, um, the guy did say that he had got my mom a room for like the, the next day or so. So um, I felt a little relieved that I knew she at least was not, you know, out on the streets or anything like that. Um, but <laughs> the next day um, or the next morning to be exact, white boy comes and tell me or he sends me screenshots of my mom sending him like dirty messages i believe it was like text messages of her herself or i can't remember i'll post them when white boy screenshot the message to me i was like you know what this is i'm fed up i can't deal with this and so i text the same number that facetimed me the day before um you know tr trying to get me to talk to my mom and stuff like that i text that same number and i'm like look mom she's still threatening people or i said she's still um not doing right i can't remember the exact words if i can find the message i'll put it right there but that's 
basically some of what I said. I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm not dealing with it. She ain't changed. I tried and I'm not doing it. So, um, I can't remember what he responded and said, but I think it was, it was like, okay, or I'm sorry, something like that. What, something real, real simple. And so, after I sent that message to him, I sent another, I immediately sent the message to my mom. And I don't remember exactly what the message said, but I'll go ahead and put the, post the messages now. that's what I said and I was I was fed up like I, I was really done with it because I felt like I was giving my all into a, a relationship that was barely even there to begin with and you still like basically spitting in my face still doing stupid stuff like even though I know the messages weren't directly directed towards me we're supposed to all be a family you can't be doing the same shit to one person and then claim you a changed person with me just because I'm your child like no you have to be the same way with everybody else not just with me because that's not genuine if you get what I'm saying um so I decided to send her a long text message and that message was to me that was like me wa washing my hands with the situation I was I knew in my heart at that time I knew I was done um I was pregnant I was stressed I was already starting to you know that's when I was dealing with depression for the very first time um while pregnant and then it, it was just too much it was way too much after i sent that message y'all probably should have just cussed out honestly because that's the way that's how she reacted as if i cussed her out <laughs> um what she did next the situation that she did next was i wouldn't even say as if i cussed her out i would say something much much worse i don't even know what could be worse I could I don't I don't know what could be so bad to cause somebody to do this to their own child but the situation that she that occurred next when she received my message y'all that situation specifically was a situation that changed my entire life like it changed my life um it made me look at life different it was a it was a big eye opener for me and an unfortunate eye opener um i'll just give y'all a hint because <laughs> i'm not gonna get into it y'all thought <laughs> i'll give y'all a hint i did end up having to call the law enforcement on her but that's not it <laughs> um that's just a start that's just a hint like i said so um i'm gonna pause right here because i don't want to give too much tea i don't want these videos to be too too long and even though i know some of y'all like these long videos but i don't like to edit them so that being said Thank y'all so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Like I said, follow me on all of my social medias because that's where I post secret giveaways. I post secret story times. <laughs> like, I'm going to be doing new things on my Instagram. Um, it's going to be some new stuff. Also, Miss Angelique is finally on Facebook. So, we're going to be doing things specifically uh, for social media. So, exclusive videos for social media that's not going to be on YouTube yeah that's what we're gonna do so you might need to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also follow me on all of the medias that are listed down below or wherever i decide to put it because i haven't decided yet <laughs> don't forget to put on your post notifications and i'm gonna see y'all in my next video bye